Hello everybody and welcome to Heart of Scrolls. Today is 17th December. We are playing 1.0 version of Scrolls. It was launched recently, like six days ago, I think. And we will talk about Scrolls for an hour now. So here with me today we have Sisp. Hello Sisp. Hi. We have Kantor. Hello Kantor. Hello. hello. And Garbinja. Hello. Hey. Awesome. So this is our show. We should have had Kalpland instead of me hosting, but he didn't show up, so I guess I'm here in his place. So let's start with the usual, what we usually start with, and that's that it will be what have you guys been playing in this past week? So who wants to go first? The guest should go first. The guest? Yes, yeah. that's you. Um, okay, I can do that. Well, scrolls release has, like you said, pretty recently. I've been playing quite a lot of Scrolls, but that goes without saying, doesn't it? For the most mm -hmm. part, if you're on a Scrolls podcast. Other than that, Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Nice. Very good game. <laughs> and in terms <laughs> in of your uh, decks in Scrolls, what kind of decks have you been playing and stuff? Well, I assume we're going to talk about this later, but the balance changes have mm -hmm. kind of thrown the meta into a weird spot, so I've just been kind of going away from any kind of standard decks I've been using and just going completely off the wall, any crazy ideas I can think of. Mm. Like just all four factions, in, obviously in separate decks, but all four factions, just, yeah. Alright. Everything. This is your turn, I guess. Uh, well, I started uh, running the Orchard Growth. I, uh, I built a little bit before the, the release, and that, that took it went fairly well in the beginning. I think I was 19-2 or something like that from the first days. Uh, but then I switched, of course, <laughs> because <laughs> who wants to play that? Uh, so now I'm, I'm uh, actually running mostly a um, new... Um, a new... It's an energy ramp uh, shenanigans deck with a fairly good early game and then, then Thea with Potion in the late game. <laughs> wow. That yeah. Sounds amazing. Uh, that's fun. Kantor, what have you been playing? I've been playing um, the a growth deck that I was playing um, before the release as well. Um, yeah, I haven't been playing on ladder a ton, but I also haven't lost yet, so that's good. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, but that's only like 10 games or something. Um, but yeah, so that's an incentive for me to, unfortunately, it's been a bit of an incentive for me to play a little bit less, because I, I want to keep that winning streak going for a while, um, post-release. Yeah. Um, I've been playing a bunch of Judgment in between. I started, I picked up one of my old order decks. I want to make like a mid-range order. Um, I've been testing that a little bit on testing grounds, but I'm finding it difficult to find testing grounds matches. It's a lot easier to find ranked ones, at least, yeah. um for players with higher ranking. Yeah, exactly. Um, how have you been enjoying Judgment post-launch, post-launch? Uh, it's... It's still very good. It still takes a bit of a while to find a match. It's a bit quicker, I think, post-launch to find a match than it used to be, but you don't get a lot of like very good matches when you do get like, they, you get matches more frequently, but the quality is a bit lower. Yeah. Because mm. there's so many new players. But um, it's pretty pretty smooth sailing for for <laughs> veterans that way. But it uh, yeah. makes you feel a little bit bad. Do you, feel the, uh, do you feel the quality of the matches improves as you go on? Is it, like, harder to win when you are at three or four wins? Or is it still super easy? Um... It's a bit, yeah, it gets a bit trickier. Like you, you, I'll hit like, like I'll hit like one hard match in like a run. Like I'll, I hit like Petios in Judgment the other day. Mm -hmm. um, so like you'll get the one uh, at like three or four wins, yeah. Yeah, it's been my experience too. It's usually like one or two hard matches. I think I, I did two of them and the first one was a five and the other one was a... 5-1, I think, or something like that. Mm -hmm. and the, the, but 
it seems like it's been shifted a little bit with um, uh, how uh, the wild change affected it. It's it's back to if you can if you can draft those uh, mono decks, they are very strong. And I think the first one, the five O, was like double veteran quake, double great wolf territory or something. <laughs> so it was yeah. a kind of a <laughs> nasty deck. But but uh, then then uh, it seems like the you could, could have more. Um, uh, deck rarity with uh, with the old wild, uh, and that's um, a bit unfortunate. It feels like it's a uh, innocent bystander to the wild nerf, <laughs> yeah. which is should be sad. I feel absolutely the same way. The old wild was perfect in judgment. With second up to double your minimum. Right now, it's just like back to, but it's still fun. I I still find mm -hmm. judgment incredibly fun, and yeah. I managed to go O2 by the way post launch. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I just went did, O2 with the. What did you draft? I, I don't know. It was like energy something not really working. I d drafted pseudo uh, mono energy structures that didn't work and it's just. Yeah, I, I, I'm bad at it. I don't know. I'm getting worse. But <laughs> in ranked, beast growth, rocking it. It's amazing. I'm still yeah. loving it. It's. Uh, I don't know if I can ever get tired of the deck. Calling the flock plays are just so amazing against even <laughs> trials and stuff. Uh, the daily trials today. I had like 18 attack rats attacking all over the place. After I calling the flock, my three stack hearted great wolf with crimson pool on him. It's just. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it's one one sexy deck that one. Yeah. There seems to be a lot of like different growth variants that can actually work fairly well now. I'm a little bit surprised actually with the with the onslaught of growth since I mean it wasn't necessary like that in in late beta. I mean we started to, to get a hint of it in in uh, uh, the scrolls guide open when you looked at the top performing decks there. But it's I actually I listened to an old podcast uh, a couple of days ago. And I think it was almost with, I mean, there was some balance changes happening between there and there, but I mean, then we were talking about growth not being anywhere. Uh, and that's like a month and a half back or something like that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it changes pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. Growth never goes away. It's always there. Now, it's always for the releases also. Then, then it's like, like yeah. no, one's, no one's counting on growth being anything. And then it's like, yeah, everything, everyone goes back to growth because it's fast games and everything with that good for release climbing. And then people hmm. are like, oh, wait, growth is actually pretty good now. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, it feels like the, just, be, just before that, everyone has kind of get, gotten bored of it and moved away from it, and then everyone's back for the release on it, so. Yeah, it feels like the meta is still shifting, which I find amazing. I mean, in Scrolls Guide Open, we had just energy, energy, top places where all energy growth got knocked out, decay didn't even reach top 60, top up whatever it was it, it was just pretty it looked like the meta was figured out and a week later in esl christmas cup is just hey here's a decay deck here's order everything's been played it's just pretty nice i think and makes you think if we sometimes aren't shouting for buffs and nerfs too soon so yeah decay got shifted around a lot i mean if you look at the decay decks before they started uh, messing with the the curse and the the poison balance changes, I mean, you look at what's been playing now. It's it's quite different decay decks. I mean, now a lot of them are uh, centered around conduit, which got that slight buff, and now now everyone's playing it. So mm -hmm. it's uh, it's amazing how much a faction can be swapped around like that. I mean, curse decay doesn't look too great at the moment, for instance. So. Yeah. I, s I started saying this around when Rebellion released, and I'm feeling it now more than ever, is that there's just so many good cards that it's really yeah. hard to... Like, there's so many options when you're building your deck. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that the most in growth, like you guys had mentioned, like there's a lot of growth variants, even though like the general game plan tends to be very similar. Um, that there's a lot of subtle variations you can do, and I think that's true in most of the, most if not all the resources. Like that's definitely, you notice that as well with with um, decay, like you were saying, with um, yeah, 
you can either go like the conduit and like you can go like the undead route or the um or the like witch doctor route and sort of there's anything in between and yeah exactly. the amount of variation in terms of growth cards like do you play um the orchard or do you play yeah. Yeah, yeah, do you play Terrain Brood, or you do, do you play Breaker? Like, there's lots of lots of decisions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, I think it's 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 actually there's a lot of those like sleeper scrolls. I think that are still like terribly played. I mean, I was surprised how good Orchard was, but uh, I mean, it's it's obviously there is there is downsides to the card. Don't get me wrong. One of the one of the funny fact also one of the losses in the 19 to climb I did was to, to counter playing growth <laughs> so, which countered my orchard fairly well I mean the other the other growth games were, were fairly good for me but that one when he had brother of the wolf and all of that uh, it, it kind of he started messing with my orchard a little bit too much for me to handle uh, well, I was sad that ran out. yeah I can imagine I wasn't <laughs> <laughs> and that was my orchard uh, no, that was a bit greedy, but but uh, this one of those cards. I mean, that's like I guess it, sure it got the slight buff now with like a one more lingering. But I mean, the the power level when that car that scroll works. I mean, it's like a rallying for five turns straight that you can be a benefit for for like one one <laughs> uh, one cost. So so it's mm -hmm. like that one, and also also conduit obviously was a little bit buffed, so it's it's starting to see in play now. I'm still uh, amazed that sickening fumes aren't seeing any more play than it is. Uh, but I've seen that like draining mist has come back again, for instance, in all of this growth meta, and yeah, and there's, there's a ton of things that are like either not played or forgotten a bit. Sudden eruption, hmm. that crazy snargle hunter run, also that uh, caking bob had in the, <laughs> the scrolls guide open. I mean, this is a ton of scrolls that are like fairly exciting at the moment. I think, even the even the good decks are running cute cards. I feel so. It's it looks it looks interesting. Yeah, and I think it will only develop. And as far as I know, there should be balance changes relatively soon to some scrolls, uh, so that should shake things even more up. Um, let's go to launch. Uh, we have launched six days ago. It's, I guess most people would say, a little bit underwhelming with the numbers, but we still got some pretty decent numbers. Um, what's your guys feeling like, uh, how to word this? Just how, how, how are you feeling about the launch? How, how do you adjust to the new people? Do you feel like we are, I don't know, you know what I'm trying to say, hopefully. So somebody just take it, please. Um, I feel like the launch is actually in a really weird spot at the moment. Because, on the one hand, they've launched the game to full release, but there's a lot of people still kind of grasping at straws, trying to find any information they can about the game. I mean, even as like a member of the community who should you know, know all the relevant people and be able to know where to get all this information from, I'm still kind of left at odds when someone asks me, like, oh, what are the capabilities of the demo version, or mm. what's the, you know... <sighs> what should a new player be doing in the game or which do you know what precons do i buy and this that and i just feel like you know maybe the tutorials or the scrolls.com website they don't feel as if much has really changed for launch it just kind of feel like a version number to me don't you feel like the scrolls guide academy is not enough because it has loads of information in it and for some reason <laughs> no it's not really popular i feel like people don't really read it or something i don't know i, I feel it's, it's not what it should be it occupies kind of the same role as the wiki in that sense like like it's a community created site with full of mm. community created articles for the community right like it's got official supporting games through the uh tips button but for the most part you're relying on your user base to actually write articles for that and i feel like there really aren't that many people in the community who can either dedicate the time to that or mm. have the kind of reason to do that right because most people in the community up until recently have been experienced players who don't need those kind of easy beginner guides right mm -hmm. like i yeah. find myself in chat just physically telling people what to do and not directing them to guides because it's just they don't exist or there's no point and i just feel like yeah. that information should just be in the tutorials to begin with i don't know yeah, i don't know it's, it's maybe it's um the academy also is addressing maybe a little bit of the wrong issues. I mean, I don't know if you if you get those common questions and you can't direct them to like a link for that, then it feels like there's some content missing them. Um, if it be like a uh, 
I don't know, like start here kind of guide and so on. I mean, there there is some of those, but I don't think that they are fairly well known yet. So, so maybe, and I think that also there there is the um, this the sticky post also on the Reddit and all of that. But I mean, it's just yeah, I can agree that it's, it, sometimes it's easier to just give them advice to themselves and then direct them somewhere. And I mean, that's fine also. I think that uh, I don't mind doing that, but it's, I, I agree that there's like a little bit of a lack of of good places to to uh, point people when they want to learn. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like this, the academy should be enough. I feel like all the important things you need to improve uh, on based from it's like there's all the information I would personally need to become what I am today, I think. Hmm. But I get Shit. that it should maybe be in the tutorials, yeah. but I don't think the tutorials are that bad. The problem is it's loads of text and people tend to skip text and then you end up with people losing to easy AI and just not knowing the basics really. So I think it's partially, you know, you can blame the new players for not reading the text and, you know, not paying enough attention to the tutorials because Scrolls is a hard game and maybe it wasn't um, set enough uh, by all the promotion things. Scrolls is incredibly hard game to get into. It's 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 not something you can just drop to and start playing and know what to do. You have to go through those tutorials. You have to find the information and yeah, like you can make the argument that. Like what you're saying is is right, but I don't think it's correct to like blame the new player, right? Like we want we want them to come, we want them to play, we want them to enjoy it. Um, and the problem is that there's not an entertaining and enjoyable way to like for a lot of these people to get into the game and start to enjoy it, right? So you're you're absolutely right that Scrolls is it's a very hard game to get into. Um, so. To a certain extent, yeah, you need to to really get the most out of the game. You need to make an effort to go like go and learn, right? Like just figure out what's good, like what mm. what the basics of strategy and et cetera are. But um, ideally, that should be something that they like doing. They, that shouldn't be a chore. That shouldn't be a barrier to entry as much as it's possible to make it not be. Right? Yeah, I like think that, that process that's, a, fun. that's a good point. I think that it's it's uh, uh, may, maybe it's still like the, it's a little bit less handholding than than one would expect. Also, I think that with the um, I don't know, maybe it's just my take on it, but I think with the price up a bit, it kind of it goes into a kind of a different territory. Also, when it's supposed to be like a mass game and therefore should be more accessible, maybe than it is. So maybe that's coloring the perceptions a bit also. And then also when you're coming onto new mediums where games are usually fairly straightforward to get into, like tablets and, and all of that, mm -hmm. maybe the uh, expectations for how easy it's supposed to be to get into it is actually not met by by how polished it is for the, for the beginning player. So it uh, could be that also that it's kind of reaching a little bit of a different audience. Um, yeah. But on the other hand, I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there, it's, it's always a question of how much should be in the in the game and and uh, where should people go to find out. I mean, it's still, given that there's still plenty of tools in there if you can use them, especially like uh, spectating, which is great that it uh, is in the game now for the official release. I think if, it, if it's released without it, it would be much harder actually to get into stuff. But now you can always go in and and, and see it, the game being played. Uh, and learn from that, and hopefully we can continue the um, good quality of streaming that we got from, from, for instance, the Scrolls Guide Open, which had fairly uh, good content both in game and between games, like for explaining on how the games actually work. I think that that uh, that level of uh, coverage would also go a long way to get into the game, for instance, again. So. Hmm. So hopefully we can see more of that uh, going forward. 
there's something football already mentioned in the chat that uh, most of us who started in the beta pro probably learned through Twitch and watching other people play and you, you are learning from each other and it went really mm. quickly with the good players streaming and stuff. And for some reason there isn't really a Twitch community going on for Skrulls post-release as there was with the beta release. Like when beta released the community, I, I, I personally went into first and through which I reached everything else was the Twitch community and I feel like it was the best place. So is it maybe a little bit of a problem from us veterans that we are not streaming enough and that, or what's the problem there? Because I think it is a problem, right? Not having streams yeah. is in this day and age where it's super popular, really big deal. So yeah, I know what my problem is. Poor bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, uh, it it's uh, I I think it's it's uh, you're you're uh, onto something there that it, there there could be um, more streamers at the moment. But I think it's also like it's yeah, it's it's a time commitment. Obviously, I, I mean it's, we can, we can see how hard it is to get just this this stream uh, organized from time to time, for instance. So. Um, yeah, but it, it is definitely a, 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 like a big thing of the game being digital, so that it is possible to stream. And I talked earlier about, like, for instance, um, the experience of watching live magic on on Twitch, which is kind of a struggle. Uh, and with scrolls, it's it's fairly easy to get into and understand what, what's happening because you can see the scrolls and the, the place and all of that and it's like no hidden information uh, for from the uh, streamers and it's also like the like if you're watching for instance a when I use the word twitch now uh, but now I'm talking about like hand speed and eye movement and and like game skills and all of that like the mechanical skills if i mean if you're watching like league of legends or or dota or something like that 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 most of the stuff happens uh around the keyboard and the mouse which you can't see uh when you're uh when you're streaming it i mean there's not not no twitch like that in uh in scrolls so and any information that that they are processing uh, the players that is, then then you also have access to. Mm. Uh, and if you have a good commentator also on top of that, can kind of explain a little bit maybe the reasoning behind, like, yeah, he knows that they have this deck. In, in, when this deck, two decks meet, this is the critical scroll, so that's why he's not sacking that, and he's expecting to draw this now, so because he's setting up for it and hoping that it's going to work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So then you can get a fairly deep understanding of the game from that, and probably get into it much easier than like you can only get so good at League of Legends by watching it, I think. But you can probably get pretty good at scrolls uh, by watching it, I think. So it's it's there is definitely a powerful tool there as, as soon as people start streaming more. I've been noticing that about the in-game spectate as well. Um, I feel like post-release, I'm seeing kind of crazy like spectator numbers. Like I'll just open up the, or at least during the free first few days, we seem to have. The population seems to have dropped a fair bit already, unfortunately. But um, mm. yeah, the uh, you know, I d definitely noticed that there were a lot of people spectating games. Um, like you yeah, open up even the spectate, and it, even just the first like the like say top two ranked games would have like fifteen spectators like, at any given yeah. time. It was pretty great. I feel yeah, like. That might be part of the problem, though, because when you're spectating, you like see the plays, but you don't see the reasoning behind them. And there should be incentive to go out and look out for streams instead of just watching the best players play. Because yes, while you are right, you see everything they do on screen, you don't really understand it. So I feel like in the for the beginners, the commentary is super important. And yeah. So streams with commentary are definitely better, but yeah. I mean, if it's, we have to assume like people who are going to be interested in this game are able to able to reason things out a fair bit. So even having even having an example to follow and try to analyze and understand on their own terms is still yeah still great. So to a level, I think you're right, but I mean, it's it's also that. Uh, 
train of thought thing that you kind of lose. I mean, uh, Node, for instance, when you stream and um, uh, yeah, some of the other uh, really good streamers, I mean, then then they also uh, kind of explain a little bit on their on the reasoning, and I think that that you get more aha moments from that, I think, than just watching it. I mean, it's uh, people go. I think. It, I don't know how it is, but when, with learning, I think it also sticks a little bit more when someone is telling you uh, why they're doing this. You know for sure that that's the train of thought, rather than you kind of figuring out, oh, he's moving like that, why is he doing that? Or if even not reflecting, just watching the game, actually. So I'm not reflecting that there are actually learning points there. So I think it might be a little bit more pronounced when someone is commentating on it. But I don't know about cannibalizing. I think that the... Um, I don't know if it's a big, big, big issue at the moment. I mean, it's hard to tell when it's not too many streams going on, but hmm. could, could always have more, right? Well, I think when we're talking about streaming in general, I've been quite quiet in this discussion. What helps twofold is just better visual representation of scroll effects in game, right? Because on the one hand, you're helping people who are using the spectate feature to just immediately see what is going on. You don't have to click on scrolls or realize the nuances of the attack order or, say, of different enchantments interacting or effects stacking on what, on top of one another. I mean, the only one we really have a visual effect for is poison, right? Mm -hmm. And even then, that can be fairly inconsistent with things like uh, Maya Curse dealing poison damage or Infectious Blight dealing poison damage. Like, it's kind of... Infectious Blight isn't anymore. Yeah. Isn't anymore? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Poison now, I think, yeah. Right. Either way, there's very little visual representation. I think that's the main reason why you don't want to be just sitting and spectating why you want to go out to streamers, because they can... You know, I, know, I know I do this quite a lot myself if I'm hosting a stream and casting on it. It's, I, you, tr you have to be clicking on units constantly just so people know what enchantments are on them. Yeah. And, when I, that's true. Yeah. When I saw somebody streaming, a new player, um, he wasn't really reading what his opponent's units are doing. He wasn't reading what's really happening on the opposite side and was just focusing on his. And I feel like that it's also pretty hard for the beginners, you know. You have to comprehend your deck, but not only that, there's also opponent playing anything from the 360 scrolls. And it's just like, stuff like Blight Bear, they didn't read it, they just see 3 to 4 and suddenly all their things are poisoned and they lost game. So it could be pretty hard for them too. Yeah, they only do that once, though. Uh, <laughs> not really, because they no, really they, don't they realize, don't that, realize what happened. It's just, no, I know, oh, I know. my stuff is poison? How did that happen? And the Bite Bearer is not on board anymore, so they know where... I remember doing that a few months ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but... Uh, was... On the other hand, they, they, they have a very big advantage over us old-timers. They didn't have to unlearn all of the damage types, uh, which kind of <laughs> still messes, me, messes with me to, to this day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just, let's make the veterans learn new things too, so they are not that much better. Let's confuse them. At this, at this, change this. Uh, I, I, had a, I had an epic play, like just a few... Uh, days before the release, when I was like, "Oh yeah, I have my harvester. I'm just, it's gonna attack." But oh, uh, it's not, it's, I'm one off. But if I if I curse presence my own husk here before I cast damning curse, it's gonna be glorious. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> there was like no. one patch when that worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it, no, it didn't work. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I lost. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 tough to remember all of that, but uh, I think I'll, I'll get the hang of it eventually. I have faith in me. One thing I have problem with, and this is not a discussion point, just something I sh feel like I should mention. I personally, when I watch like new player stream or whatever, I go to chat and I immediately start loading information line by line by line, just trying to help him improve it and trying <laughs> to get him at a good level. And then I look at the chat that what I wrote and it's like 10, 12, 15 lines of super hard <laughs> information to yes. process. So yes, sir. Yeah. Well, good luck. Yeah. I try to well, like control myself sometimes, right? When it's watching someone streaming who's new to the game and you're like, here, learn all of this stuff. But you yeah. don't want to be like condescending either, right? So it's hard though. You want them to improve, and you feel like you should be able to give them information on which they can improve. Yeah. But there's just so many things at once they sh need to know 
it's just where, where do you start with like how do you explain why he lost that game why do you, how do you explain without explaining 10 other things why he is just not playing well yeah. I think it reminds me quite a bit of the Skrulls Guide Open casting, actually, because you could see a lot of people there knew they were casting completely to new players, right, for the most part. Yeah. And so a lot of people who were trying to tailor their casting more to that. And I think it came to a point in the middle of games where you've got two experienced players who can track all the things that are going on the board, but you can't talk about them fast enough. By the time they've made a play, enchanted the unit, casted countdown reduction, played, you know, some l huge combo plays in, you know, mid-game, late-game scenarios, you can't describe that to a new player and still make any sense, right? When you're still like sat there trying to explain what pillage does and what pumping a forge means and all these kind of things, you can't keep up with it. And I think it really does highlight just the level of information that you need to get through to people just to start be, even be able to watch kind of high level games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, most decks are actually also fairly complicated in, in how they work. I mean, they have there's a lot of interactions going on. You're also interacting in a funny way with the the opponent's board. And I mean, also, if you just look at the, like, if you count complexity as the number of possible different action a player can take, uh, I've said it before, I think, but it's it's a fairly high complex game. So as soon as you get, like, one unit out, you now have at least seven options with, with that unit alone. If you have it in the center there, you can have it stand still or you can move it around. And then you have, if you put two units, I mean, the combinations are starting to stack up. And then you also count on what different scrolls you can play and you get like tons of different scenarios. Whereas compared to, for instance, like some uh, Magic the Gathering games, uh, the plays are fairly straightforward. Like there's maybe like a couple of different lines, but and I'm not saying that all of these lines that are available in scrolls are equally valid. Obviously, there's there's paths that are more likely than others, but there is a ton of different options that you could take, uh, and and that kind of also increases the complexity. And then on top of that, add a turn timer, and you're starting to see why why it's going to be a pretty hard game to play fully fully uh, optimized on. Uh, so. Uh, trying to convey that in a in a limited amount of time, yeah, that's it's it is tough, I, I would say. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's also something that I think commentators will maybe get a little bit more used to. I mean, they need practice as well, of course. So I think yeah, the it's, easiest it's thing, the easiest thing that can be done to um, make things more a bit more transparent is tell people that you can press control and see the numbers. It's by default now, by the oh, way. Oh, it's so is it? terrible. Yeah. Is it? I really the hope amount that's of, true. The amount of streams I've got into and said, can you please press control? And then just the size of relief when they realize that's what they've accidentally hit to turn it off. Yeah, oh, they do that. No. Why? Like, just well, they, like, they realize please. they hit something and that it disappears. When I so first started playing, I didn't even know that that <laughs> was anything until like I had, until I saw like a Blinky video, mm -hmm. I think. And it just was not there. I had no idea. Um, I think I started playing after Total Biscuit released his video, and then yeah. it was quite a while until I found like a Blinky video that uh, mentioned that. Um, and yeah, that would that would That's help. Tough. Some if, of the... if you had a if you had a, like a number one tip to a new player now, would that be in, apart from control, which is <laughs> obviously the best? Yeah, press problem. control. That's the number one tip. You'll learn so well, much faster. It would be another control. good good tip then, like if you want to improve. I uh, right. That's something Solid. you should be able to figure out, but I just have no idea. Like, what's the one thing you start with? What do you build on? It's just there are five concepts all at once come in, and they need to kind of know all of them. Um. Worry. A, try to kill the unit that's going to attack you next. Yeah. Is that? Uh, no, that's kind of advanced, people. I surely. guess. Oh, I think but that's, a, that's a good one. It, I'm sure that's, as, one that's is, as succinct as I can make strategy. I think the succinct, most succinct point is take the center lane and go for creatures yeah. over idols. They're the big mistakes people make. Yeah, I mean, one. whether or not you kill their creatures as they're about to attack or not, you just kill their creatures, you know, outright, sure. let alone yeah. I think uh, also uh, Tin Fox, the uh, 
founder of the uh, the Berger Guild actually had a, a uh, pretty good tip on on when to select for scrolls or resources, which was that if you can't play your um, if you can't play out, play out your hand, then then uh, select for resources. Otherwise, select for scrolls, and it it's kind of simplified. But <laughs> it's actually very close to how my playstyle is. I think I play yeah. with a very, very low hand count all the time, just because there, I want high throughput. Like I want to play multiple things every turn. So I, I, I usually are, are hovering around like one to maybe two scrolls in hand most of the time. And then every time I see someone, I'm facing someone, and they have like five resources and seven scrolls in hand. I'm like. What are you digging for? <laughs> what do you have in your hand? I mean, that you can't. If you if you could play three things out of your hand, how can that possibly be better than what you're digging well, for? So I think honest, that's a good tip also to not be afraid to select for resources even like later in the game. Well, for beginners, mm -hmm. I notice they they usually stack for resources too much and they just go into top deck every single turn and they want to play the thing they draw and then they not sacrifice and just keep playing whatever comes to their hand and. I noticed that a lot more too, Ice Cream. I definitely yeah. agree with you there. I think a lot uh -huh, of people, okay. new players sack for resources way too often. They'll be at like six and they'll play a four drop and they'll sack for resources and have three three floating. I'll be like, why? Like, what is this for? But. Uh. Yeah, it wouldn't be a problem if they just had floating resources because they are still building up their economy, but when they sacrifice their last thing in hand for resources when wait, they don't need to and then go into top deck it's just completely wrecks everything they should be doing i still think that like top decking when you're on when you're on seven is much better than than like sacking for like your scroll, fifth or sixth scroll when you're on four or five i mean i think that there's just a possi bigger possibility that you'll be able to play those two than than uh yeah if but uh, but I mean that's uh, that's just me. But I, I I definitely enjoy playing it more like that when I'm when I'm very high high up in the resource count. But it it also kind of depends on the deck a bit. But in general, I see it a lot that I'm like uh, the it's it's sometimes the answer to a tricky board position is just to play more stuff, not necessarily to play the right stuff, but just like to to play more stuff onto the board and stall it a bit. Instead of just trying to dig, like, okay, I need my quake now, I need my quake now, I need my quake now, and then you're trying to dig for it, and you dig for it, and you dig for it, and then you lose. Even then, after your quake, you're like in a fairly miserable state usually, because then the other player might be at like nine resources or eight resources, and you stayed on five. And they drop well, the... three, two more things after the quake, and you're like, okay, now I'm back in the same situation again, but my quake costs seven now. Yeah, well, the like, uh, you just need to find another one. Yeah, yeah. that's like. Is uh, if I don't know if you ever saw um, the Overlord made a all creature deck. It's a zero spells deck. It had well, I think it had like Imperials as like its only spell. Yeah. But yeah, that's like the reducto ad absurdum for that concept, <laughs> and it was actually incredibly strong too. Yeah, I know. Against a lot of, you don't need to actually. Yeah, sometimes just presenting a new threat. And like letting your other threats try to count down, and just letting them attack naturally is a lot better than like trying to dig for a rallying or something to clean things up. Exactly. Now I think that the, the, in general people play with with too few creatures. I mean the uh, the orchard deck I climbed with ran uh, forty creatures plus three rat kings, uh, oh. and obviously it has a lot of synergy with just dropping creatures. But I mean it's it's working well with you when you just like. Yeah, creature, creature, creature. Then, oh, you're you killed. You're gonna hit hit one of my creatures. Well, Rat King in front of everything, or just like muck up the board while your other creatures are doing damage. That's also card advantage in a sense that people tend to undervalue. I think that they they don't they look at the the hand totals instead of the board sometimes to see like who has the most options and the most scrolls. But I mean, I'm I'm fairly confident. I mean, even if my opponent has like five scrolls in hand, and I have one. If I have five things out on the board, I, I, f I feel like I'm way ahead. But yeah. sometimes I feel like people undervalue that and just look at the hand totals. Uh, and scrolls so. on the board are worth more than scrolls in the hand, obviously. Although yeah, they're, they're maybe usually, that's not so obvious. I mean, scrolls on the boards are usually like one scroll to deal with uh, mm -hmm. on average. Yeah. So, so I mean, and if, if it also kind of like is implicit pressure on like where you can actually drop stuff and everything like that so it's it's restricting their options quite a lot uh, so i don't know it's it feels like that's 
something that people tend to be to undervalue how good it is to just play any creature on the board compared to a powerful spell. Uh, and <laughs> it's funny that the, the Overlord deck, the, I think the first time me and the Overlord actually had a conversation on Reddit was around like a semi troll comment I made about one of his order decks. Like, why, why don't you play like 44 creatures and uh, three blessings and uh, three uh, three imperials? And he's like, this madness. And then it's like one year later, he's playing a little bit of testing, you know. But, uh, yeah. but it's, it's just uh, obviously creature quality has improved since then. But, but, I think that there's definitely cases for like running energy could be like a prime example of that where Snargle for instance could be like a very very good creature if it just was in a spell light deck mm -hmm. but it kind of doesn't exist too much at the moment but I mean there's, there's a lot of uh, under played parts there with just playing more creatures and structures I think yeah like what you were saying about how the deck you were laddering with had 40 creatures, I think you said, and three Rat Kings. Like, yeah. the deck I'm laddering with has 33 creatures and three Nog Nests. So, like, yeah. the same thing. Just like, the vast majority. Just, just it's, placing there's, big there's dudes. Yeah, there's something about being proactive in the game. I think it's a very strong incentive to be proactive in Scrolls. So, so playing high creature counts should be the norm, but people tend to, like, stop at a lot of the decks stop at like 25 or something like that. And uh, I feel like that might be a little bit too too low in most cases. Uh, that they uh, tend to overvalue. Because that's also the whole like uh, buff uh, needing, buffs needing uh, creatures thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that that you can, you can throw your ratios off a bit where you like to get these top deck modes and then you draw like two spells. Yeah. I mean, the thing is that with that deck, uh, with, with 40 creatures and, and um, three Rat Kings, uh, if you're top decking on that one, you're going to draw two creatures, which is usually what you need to get Tree Brute going or like uh, Keeper going or Orchard going or anything like that. It's a very consistent draw, so I mean, so I'm not afraid to be like on top deck mode with that deck because usually you can, you can play what you get and it's going to be two things that affect the board. Uh, whereas, like, if it's much, and it's also that also works on an empty board. Uh, whereas, if you do the same thing with the uh, more uh, spells and uh, buffs uh, laden deck, then on an empty board you have a very high chance of whiffing, like only drawing one creature, for instance, or or drawing no creatures and can't play anything that turn. And a dead turn in scroll is usually like the game. I mean, it's very hard to come back from that when you're not playing anything for a turn. So do you feel it maybe could be a good idea to make some very, very creature heavy decks and just spread them to new players? You know, when they are asking for deck lists uh, on Reddit and wherever, we should just maybe link them to some adjusted decks that are way easier to play and encourage them to do things like that to help them learn? Is, is that something we could maybe do to help them? I think we were getting a little bit advanced talking about, like, at what at what resource count you should stop and like how many creature count what the creature count of your deck should be like those are fairly advanced topics for a new player I think but um, mm. in general like yeah getting decks that are easy to easy to play and easy to build out to new players is definitely a good thing um, there's been a little bit of incentive I've seen a few threads on Scrolls Guide about like oh I made a deck that's almost all commons. Um, for example, um, mm. I've seen some threads on that. I think those are a good thing. I don't know how easy it is to find those at the moment, um, but uh, like yeah. you can do a lot. Especially like if you take like the growth starter and you start filling in the rest with like even just like Sister of the Bear is so good for a new player. It's a yeah. common and it, it's almost as good as everything that anyone else is playing. Um, it's just slightly worse, so nobody plays it because there's tons of good four drops. Um, but yeah, there's so many like Wetland Ranger is common. Like you can build a you can build a really good deck for really cheap if you uh, if you want to, and you know how. Yeah, but I think that the the whole like creatures are creatures are good, play more creatures is fairly easy to to grasp. I mean, it's it's a very common tip in judgment, but I think that it might, it might actually stand a little bit more than that. So I don't remember exactly how the precons are in ratios, but I feel like that 
probably the biggest thing to improve them is to uh, first take out some of the, the spells and enchantments and put in more creatures. Would we'll probably bump the win rates a bit, and then maybe take out a few of the structures and put in more creatures also. Uh, it's probably a very solid advice of just getting the win rates up a bit on that one. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, because just, just simple advice of just like put some more creatures yeah. in your deck. It's definitely good. You're yeah. all advocating very, very heavy creature decks, but I think it actually, just as a counter-argument, some decks mm -hmm. don't have to rely just on completely heavy creatures. I think new players can definitely, you know, just be given... So if you give, if you give a new player a meta deck, I think they would actually do fairly well with it, right? It's not... They don't yeah. have to just play the new quote-unquote... Like scrolls, like some right? some master control or something. Okay, some master control. Do you call that a meta <laughs> deck? You know, but I mean, it's in general, deck, I think yeah. a deck becomes easier to play when you give yourself more options. The job of a new yeah. player is to realize that they have those options, right? Like they might not see some crazy bombard Oculus cannon play in their hand, right? But if they had that available to them, maybe they'd you know be able to learn that more quickly, I guess. Before and I then even then, sorry. winning doesn't necessarily equate to having more fun with the game, right? Just as kind of a side point. I'll uh, no, just mention no. that uh, we have new players probably watching. I guess I hope so. If you have any questions, somebody was asking for Q and A. Uh, you can feel yeah, like feel free to ask questions in chat. We are, or at least I am, reading it. So we will take questions whenever you ask something. And I feel like it's a good thing to talk about. And I'll continue on our topic because the one streamer I kind of like took under my wings and I'm trying to make him good. Uh, he's really good, he's improving fast, so he's very talented, but what he said at start, he said I want to play the K deck and he already had almost the start unlocked, so he had 18k gold saved up and I just decided, you know, let's give him this under the deck that uh, Atmas built, let him buy it all straight up. He was almost able to, he was missing like 6 or 7k so i gave him two conduits and somebody else gave him irvas and he bought few uh, remaining irvas and even though he doesn't really understand deck i feel like he is slowly learning how to play it and he's starting to see the combinations that are available there and it's like it's pretty good for him i think like mm. it's a good deck on its own kind of you know it's just creatures bashing each other but when you start to see the combos you begin to improve a lot more and Decay is super hard to learn, I think, but he's starting to understand how Harvester really works and so on, so... Mm. That, that ties to question just asked in chat, what is the friendliest deck to start for new players? So, I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Not something control it, but if, even if you give him heavy creature deck with all commons, he will probably learn good if you give him something that has lots of synergy he will probably start seeing it soon too yeah i think on a on a micro level uh, i'm just gonna st continue on the creature around here but i think actually structures are a little bit harder to play than creatures innate just because if you place them wrong uh you <laughs> have a very hard time repairing that mistake like for yeah. instance say you're playing a structure in uh middle of row two for instance like uh that thing is gonna influence your your movement around it so much it's gonna be a little bit like a i don't know a tent pole or something like that if you have to dance around so it's, it's restricting you probably more than you, you drop that so experienced player usually learn to not drop structures there they drop it in the front or they drop it in like uh I mean, favorite spots for, for uh, forges, for instance, are fairly commonly known now to be like middle of top row or bottom row, uh, because that's a good way of protecting them and also having enough space for them to spawn, etc. and so on. So it's, the, the, but it's much easier with creatures because then, because then you're like, if you're placing it in the earth too far away from the opponent, you can move them closer again or if you like you can you can adjust them if you place them in the wrong order it can be a little bit awkward to get them to move around but you can adjust over a game at least and structures are a little bit harder so probably something <laughs> probably something with a little bit more creatures than than structures because they are a little bit easier to to learn the the positioning nuances which i think is actually fairly important to get into because a, a lot of the game is actually just creatures bashing into each other and also learning when when to uh, 
when to move in and when to move away is, is a very critical skill, like around controlling the center row and so on. So like sometimes it's it's suicide to move in, and sometimes it's the exact right choice. Uh, so I think it's much easier to to get to that point if you have a deck that's uh, starting to see that uh, that interaction when you have a deck that has a lot of creatures and are interested in the positioning. I think so. But that could, your, be any, and that could be an infection, I think. Yeah. To your point there, um, and also earlier you asked, like, what would be your first advice as I've, to a new player? Um, it's very closely related to what you just said, but just came to mind now is move your creatures. Like, to mm -hmm. a very, very new player, it's like, yeah, press control and move your creatures. Uh, yeah. I was watching, yeah, I was watching Color Plant stream, and he was doing... Um, like a little mini tournament between people with demo accounts to, and he was giving away a uh, game key to the winner. And they would just, they would just forget that their creatures could move. They'd stand there, they'd hit each other. Like sometimes they'd move them a lot, of, but there was like, for example, there was a, there was a sister of the bear that was in the front row and she stayed there the entire game. And she had like, two or three opportunities throughout the game that if she'd moved one square, she wasn't buying root or anything, she could have killed an extra unit. Um, and, like, obviously that's something that, like, you could learn very quickly, but if people are overwhelmed by trying to learn what all the cards do and they just forget these things, like, just remember to move your creatures. Even if you don't think that you need to, even if you don't really know where to move them, just try moving them somewhere. Try to think about where's the best place to move them. Mm. Yeah, that's a great tip. Right. We have some more, uh, not some more, but some actual uh, questions coming to chat, so uh, I feel like they are pretty good, so I'll talk about them. If you guys feel like um, you can give, uh, you can add to my response, because I'll try to go through them quick, because time is running low. But if you feel like you have something to add, just feel free to interrupt me and uh, stop with the copy paste knows in chat please so do you advise new players to pick a deck idea and buy the cards on the black market to have playable deck or to buy booster to build a library to have options to test build i feel like this is a very good question but the response is not like one response it's just it ba it's basically what kind of player are you if you are somebody who likes to uh, discover things on their own, then it's good to, you know, build the, uh, buy the boosters and try expanding the deck on your own. But if you want to become good as fast as possible and you don't really care about the uh, process of getting there, then definitely buying the meta deck from Scrollger straight of black market for the cheapest. If somebody gives you tips, it's a great way to learn. It's a great way to fall quickly into the meta and start understanding the game on the top level that that is present so uh it depends mm. on what i kind think of you can you are. Go. give a much more general answer than that question though like it's a very open question but i think the easiest way to answer it is just quite literally to unlock all the starter decks play with each of the factions figure out which one kind of suits your player style either because you enjoy it the most or you do better with it i mean i assume those two will be quite interlinked anyway and from there, you just build your deck, right? You either want to experiment yourself, or you want to go on Twitch, like we said earlier, or on the spectating game. Watch what other people are playing at high ranks, and start, you know, building that deck. If you're not interested in playing competitively, then you should be fine just, you know, buying whatever you want and building your deck quite naturally that way. Yeah, I think it's good. I think what maybe I don't know if there is such a resource, but it would be interesting to see, like maybe a a uh, list of staples somewhere. Yeah. I don't know if there, 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 you know if there is like nope. uh, that kind of list, uh, but I think that that might be good. Like to do that if, if you want to invest into a faction, for instance, I mean, what should you go for? What is usually going to be played in your deck, for instance, like for Decay, like investing in, in Harvester seems like a fairly good bet. Uh, and uh, maybe Damning Curses, for instance, it's probably not going to go out of style. Uh, in a up. while, yeah, it's in like or forges or burns or yeah, what right. what what not. So that that could be interesting to 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 have also. But yeah, Let's see if we can try and get through some more questions. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody was asking if we if we recommend players to use starter decks. I said uh, basically for or I think basically what Cardin just said. You should mm -hmm. play them to figure out which kind of resource you really like and what kind of thing you want to play. Because once you dip all your gold that you gained in the beginning of the game of the game into a specific deck, you are uh, most likely to stick with it for a while, so just make sure you will enjoy the resource you picked. So yeah, play them until you are sure what, what you want to play for a while. Mm. Another question was, was uh, what's the best way to learn all the cards, combos and so on? Build the deck with all the factions and play them all? I don't think like that's a good way to do it, but I think that through playing on in quick matches, you will meet all kinds of decks and just paying attention to what your opponent plays is the best way to to learn. Like you have to have your deck that you kind of know, and then you are able to focus on, on what your opponent is doing and what his cards are and trying to understand them there. And also if you buy a pack, you see 10 scrolls, so make sure you know what you just bought and read them all properly because you have time there, so... Anyone wants to add anything to the response? No, I think it's a... Uh, no, I think that was pretty kind of well summed up, up yeah. Alright, yeah. then there was a question about weakest card and proposed buffs, but I don't think we really want to go into that right now. <laughs> I think we should, he asked it like, he asked it twice, he wants to hear something. We should tell right. him something. Gundor, rig, are... rig, rig it is fairly bad. <laughs> it's good! There's, bad. there's a lot of uh, bad cards out there. Golem Most skin. Go Golem, oh. Golem skin. Awesome. Yeah, there is no skin. reason to ever play it in any deck. <laughs> you can I had a deck that with played it. it once, but that's a story for that I've told lots of times because I love that story. Um, okay. But uh, what else? There's there's lots of bad cards. Um, I was looking at one earlier. It was. Uh, there's some cards that don't even do anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Atrophy and Arthritis are pretty bad. Um, yeah, that one is not pretty good. With that said, there are scrolls that I always thought were going to be completely useless, but they actually started to see play lately, so... Um, mm. Yeah, there's just... all sorts that end up seeing play somehow. How, how, how good is the new Yankyard? It's good. I that's the thing that wrecked me in judgment one time. It was just he had two beast threats, about two junkyards, red king, Manchu red, and I lost. Imagine having I want to actually make a new junkyard deck. Like it looks pretty cool. Yeah. But right, it's, essentially, confirmed. it's essentially old Greylock Elder, but without the survivability of five health base. But it's it still doesn't. pretty Oof. easy to protect if you spam creatures in front of it. So yeah, surprisingly good. Um. Lots of kappas in chat. I don't see any more questions. I tried copying <laughs> all of them into a separate document, but I think there's so many bad cards, but almost all of them can be used for something. Yeah. And they added kind of interesting mechanics on some bad cards, like Blood Boil, for example, sees play if you want to suddenly go from growth to do energy for machination mindset in heavy enchantment deck, and so on. Pillar of Disease is really bad. That's something. Yeah. What's what that? Know. Venereal Disease? Pillar, Pillar of Disease? disease. Minus Pillar of Disease. Attack. Oh, but that's so good in judgment, though. <laughs> it's it's amazing how hard that skull is actually to deal with in judgment because there's like you usually have like mediocre power on your on your guys. I mean, you might have a lot of them, but they're like individually they might be not so hard hitting, and then it takes forever to kill that thing. So, so you, nah, I think you're, the, you're that guy who plays bitterroot against me all the time too, then, aren't you? Um, <laughs> so many bitterroots in judgment. I don't understand. Don't understand. Oh, monstrous brood. Uh, anyway, oh, let's move yeah, on to yeah, that's uh, that's a tough one. I'm 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 sad for the monstrosity. I thought it was pretty good before they started mucking with it, and now monstrous no brood is actually playable in red deck. 
if you have red and watcher Gaiden and you play monsters brood then you don't have reds but you have monstrosities instead and you proc watcher with all of them and I saw it played it has a spot in the niche decks I feel all right so we found out there's no bad cards cool <laughs> uh... <laughs> No, they are definitely bad cards, but... Yeah, they're, they're on the curve. <laughs> they will be played eventually, trust They me. are on the right. curve. Next question. Um, replenish, we should talk about replenish. Yeah, it's good. Antwerp had a pretty interesting question. Was it about turtles? Uh, no, it was nothing to do. It was about scrolls release. <gasps> can you find a question? I can find the question, yeah, it was just recently Why do you think chat, uh, there was what? relatively little coverage of scrolls after release compared to beta release, says and oh, asks yeah. Andy Rad. That is... One thing I do not understand, and I could rant about it probably for half, half an hour, but apparently the gaming industry reached a point where all media covers game only in beta, and when it actually releases, they don't bother to cover it because they send out keys to all the reviewers and sites, even smaller YouTube channels focused on strategy, and there is literally no one covering scrolls. There was one critic review in six days, and I'm furious because it just doesn't make sense how are critics not covering second Mojang game. I don't understand it. Everybody counted on it. Mojang counted on it. So that is why we are not seeing as big growth of players as we potentially could, and it just I, I don't understand it. Why is no one covering it? But when you search those sites for scrolls, all you see are like two or three articles on beta. But it's released now. Now is the time you should cover it, not in beta. That's not the time to cover games. And I'm just mad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah time I think it's still coming. I hope yeah. so. I sincerely hope so because it's a disaster. You look at Metacritic and it doesn't have rating yet because there's only one review. Pretty good one though. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. to things looking up a little bit, um, like a couple days before the release, um, some friends of mine mentioned it, like without me bringing it up. I'm just like, oh, I heard that that was coming out. So that that was good. It looks, I don't know how they heard about it, but apparently, apparently, people are. The word is traveling. So. Yeah, and it will travel even more uh, because it's finally reaching good positions in Google Play Market on Android. You can actually find it under cards now, which you couldn't yeah. a few days back. So it should hopefully start growing more and more through that, as my expectation at least, because I know there is a lot of people looking for good card games on tablets. So when they see scrolls, eventually when they discover it, they should like it. And it, it's definitely out there and it's in the top games even on the card mm -hmm. category so it's good yeah. yeah anyone wants to talk about anything else i think we might have few minutes i don't know when we exactly started but it's time for final thoughts so i'll just go one by one you are not probably eager to talk only about topics otherwise you would have stopped me so let's just go one by one say a few final words maybe plug whatever the hell you want to plug i know i will want to so let's start with sis and go around the around the table sis go well um thanks for hanging out guys uh, hopefully we can uh, deliver Heart of Scrolls a little bit more um, frequently than earlier. It was a little bit of a an hiatus. It's like a lot of bad things coinciding at once here. And that as mm -hmm. we're, we're giving uh, Mojang and reviewers a little bit of lack of not being synchronized here for the launch. I think that <laughs> there's, there's other other things that could have been uh, been uh, working a little bit better than that. But uh, uh, thanks for hanging out tonight. It was it was fun and uh, play more creatures. <laughs> Card Ninja, go. Um, I just want to thank you guys for letting me on as a guest. Just, Our I was pleasure. kind of surprised. I don't really do much in the community other than cast games. I don't know you if I'm okay to... Though. That's yeah, what I... we needed. Didn't you pay attention <laughs> earlier? We wanted more casters. <laughs> I'll be streaming soon. I guess that's something I can plug. Me and Billy doing a lot of casting work together probably expect me to be streaming sometime soon. I've had a few problems 
that stopped me from doing that recently after release, but this weekend-ish I should be good to go. So Amazing. look out for streams coming from me and so Billy Twitch in the future. In case My support. Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash creeping ninja. I don't know if anyone wants to link that in chat. Yeah, I can do that. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Is that it? That's it, yeah. Awesome. Gunther, your turn. Alright, um, final thoughts. Uh, move the more creatures that Sis told you to play. You should move them. And the creatures. Yeah, the more creatures that you play, you should move them. Um, and I... Normally I would plug my Twitch stream, but I haven't streamed for months. Sorry, everybody. Um, hopefully I will... I definitely won't be streaming until after the Christmas break. Um, if I do get the stream going again. Um, I'd like to, though, but uh, mm -hmm. it's twitch.tv slash trustyfish if you want to check it out. Um, there's, I'm sure there's still some old, or old archives there that you could look at if you'd like. Um, yeah, hopefully in the new year I'll get the stream rolling again. Because um, scroll streams are great. So back to you, Ice Cream. All right, I will start plugging because I didn't properly plug myself since I started doing Harder Scrolls, so I feel it's about time to remind everybody that I have Twitter, that's at D-J-E-T-E-L-E-N-A. I'm sorry, my name is weird. Um, and most importantly, I run a website about news and scrolls, and it's called roastedbeanpotion.com. It's spelled roasted bean potion, same as in the game, the card, and we focus mostly on tournaments. We also do daily trial guides. Every single day Danatron goes and writes a guide for easy, medium and hard trial with decks provided for their, for that. So um, that's, that's a useful thing. And it's getting not as much traffic as I would like to. And I'm, I think I'm doing pretty good job at covering ESL and, and stuff. So roastedbeampotion.com, get it into your RSS readers and probably visit it every now and then. Um, and Heart of Scrolls, you're watching this. If you like this, we are on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash user slash slash guild. We are also here on Twitch, so follow us, please. Um, and we are also on iTunes. You can find it if you just search for Heart of Scrolls. Also, other podcast means it's linked on Reddit. And that's the final thing. If you're a new player and you don't visit Reddit, you totally should. It's where most things are happening and everything important is linked every single time. I don't think we miss many things. So, yeah. Wow. That's it. Thank you very Bye, much, everybody, for being here. Thank you, people, for watching. It was nice to see the numbers go up again. We'll see you next week at 10 p.m. CET on this very Twitch channel or again later on YouTube, iTunes and whatever the else, whatever else you want to listen to us on. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have a great night. Take care.